Hey. I'm gonna check, make sure it's working on YouTube as well. Can you see my pen and paper? No. People are tuning in, Tab. Okay. Then it's a start. So I know we'll just say we're waiting. Wait now. Yeah, yeah. Hi guys. Um, welcome. We're just gonna wait. Um, just to let half past come and let people join in. Yeah. Sorry. Let us know where you guys are at. The good thing about not having it physically yeah. is the fact that anyone can be here Literally. so let me know what areas i would have said the flags actually boop boop drop the flags where you from what countries are in the building hello that's it we're live on twitter i'm just trying to check youtube make sure that's working as well okay yeah i think yeah we're live on youtube also yeah we're live everywhere We've got some comments coming in. Oh. Already. Yeah, we did have some comments coming in. Yeah. We've got DJ Arnie says hello. Matilda says let's go. Oh, they're coming in a bit late. Oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah. Did you see the hello, comments? yeah, now I can see them. Guys, it's like a little bit delayed, so if it's like why is Tanaka not speaking? That's what it is. Yeah. Hi, Matilda Wagon. <laughs> it's been a while. We're just like waiting for enough people to get to jump in and then we'll get started. Yeah. We started on time, by the way. <laughs> yeah, of course. Always on time. That's what we are. This is really awkward because I'm just, everyone can hear my combo. <clears throat> can you see is it like Instagram live like can you see how many people are in the building yeah you can see that the stuff okay okay nine people in the building but I've only got two hellos who else is in here let us know say hello sorry guys the start is always the awkward time trying to wait until everyone's here hola Thank you guys for tuning in. Hello everybody, hello. Yeah, half past, let's go. Locked in and ready to go. I wish I had emojis, like boop, boop, <laughs> hey. <laughs> Those are comments. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for tuning in. Like, we really appreciate it. Right, share there's the 11 link. people in the share, building. Share the link, share the link. Share yeah, share the link, guys. If you can hear another voice, by any chance, yes. <laughs> that's Solomon. <laughs> He's my alter ego. <laughs> yeah, guys, share the link. Tell your friend, tell a friend, tell your sister, tell your brother. You know how it goes. Let's get some people in here. Momentum, it's going to be a good session. A free masterclass. Come on, 2020 is looking like a disaster and yet there's a free masterclass from Pi Radio. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. Welcome to the Just had a thunderstorm. Just, oh, just had a thunderstorm. Should have a little silence. <laughs> I'll make them on my face. We should have played a game. You guys should um, write down an emoji and see if I can copy it. Put an emoji down and see if I can copy it on my face. <laughs> 
Welcome in to everyone who's just joined. I can see the numbers going up. That's really positive. Thank you, guys. Uh, Queen Tan Tan, big up. Way! <laughs> yes, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Okay, there's an emoji. Oh, that's a party. <laughs> Boom. You want to start right now? Is that to you? No, that's not the plan. You... Oh, right. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's just become <laughs> shishing my alter ego. Like I said, guys, it's only 32 past. I'm loving the keenness. But what we're going to do is just wait a few more minutes, let a, a few other people join, and then we'll get started. So, yeah. Stay locked in. You got this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. How's quarantine, guys? Are you guys keeping to the rules? or what because i know personally i'm just about to add manchester manchester's not doing too well with the rules we're not guys <laughs> just a few more minutes welcome to everyone who's joining the numbers are going up i like this hi guys i'm queen tan tan and welcome to the master class Good vibes, always, always. I mean, if you can have good vibes in 2020, you're a real one. You're an absolute real one. Woo, every time, every, literally guys, every time I'm looking up, there's more people. So we're gonna start in about one minute, I think, because there's a lot of people joining. So, I, one or two minutes, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. I know people can be late, so I'm just gonna. I know. See DJ Harvey. People out here raving. Did anyone see what happened yesterday in Manny? Whoa. There's a lot of things going on. I mean, I mean, as long as you're safe and healthy, I'm not mad. I'm not mad. We've got a really exciting guest today, guys, which I'm I'm sure you already know. But if you know, but you know someone else doesn't know, share it, tell your friend, tell your sister to tell your brother, get your mom to tell your dad, tell your stepmom, you know, how it goes. Okay. Okay, let's get started. Let's get started now, I think. Okay, cool. So, guys, welcome to the masterclasses given to you by Pi Radio. Bang. Um, it's a free masterclass on this Zoom, as you already know. And today's one is presenting. I'm Queen Tan Tan. It's your girl, Queen Tan Tan. Um, and it's going to be a max time of two hours. That doesn't mean that it's going to take two hours, but that means it's going to be two hours. We're going to have a little interval break about 7.15. So at 7.15, we'll probably like chill out for about 15 minutes, let you guys go use the toilet, get a drink, move around, stop staring at the screen. Um, but for now, we're going to kick it off. Today, our guest is a man called Chris. Okay, and we're really, really, really lucky to have Chris. Let me tell you why. Because not only does he have 35 years of presenting experience on commercial radio, he also is a coach and develops presenters boom so that means someone can tell you from their experience they can tell you from a perspective of teaching others they can tell you mistakes that people commonly make they can give you all the advice for free right here yeah stay locked in cool share the link throughout um but for now let's let's get chris in let's get chris in i wish we had some music should i oh, i can't even beatbox i've got a little helper who's just getting Chris in the building. Hello. Can you hear us? Nope, not yet. Can you hear me now? Hello? Hello, I'm all here. Oh, yes, I can hear. Hi, Chris, how are you? I'm good in yourself. Thank you for I'm that welcome. Fine. You're welcome. I just want to say thank you once again for joining us. We're Pleasure. really, really, really um, happy to have you. Literally, experience for free 2020 on Zoom from the comfort of your home. That's perfect. <sighs> Exactly. Just exactly. in from that gorgeous, blazing sunshine that I didn't expect today. I, well, we're in Manchester, rainy Manchester, but it did yeah. show a bit of sign today. 
It did. It said we're going to have thunder. So who knows in the next two hours? It could just happen. Yeah, it could true. just happen. Okay. So, um, like I said, 35 years of experience. Yeah. Um, 35 years. <laughs> a long time. But, um, you know, I was super lucky. I literally got into the radio uh, the day I left school. Um, do you want me to tell you all about the history? Yeah, Shall I give absolutely. you a bit of it? So what, you just finished school okay. and how did it happen? How does that well, happen? Well, I started as a teenager, a radio station called Piccadilly Radio. Now, well, then became Key 103, then became what's now The Hits. Um, and I, I was, you know, I was an anorak. At school, I wanted to be in radio. It's what I wanted to do. It's, it, I, you know, I was breathing the air of radio really quickly at, age, at my young age. And I heard about this kid show that was on Piccadilly Radio. And I, I got in there. Um, and I got in there and I was in there a lot. You know, I was in there any possible moment of my life. I could be in that radio station. I was in there. Uh, and I was really lucky uh, when I left school. I literally got a job on the day I left school. I was going to work for the town hall as an office clerk or something. And then I got a call um, on the way. Uh, it was probably when I got home. But uh, do you want to come work in commercial production? I was like, yeah, tomorrow? Okay, I'm there. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's what it And then it just, just went on from there onwards. Um, Kind of moved through the ranks from presenting on um, commercial production, making the adverts, producing, and we produced some award winning social action documentaries like Teenage Pregnancy, Drugs, Mental Health, Domestic Violence, uh, and Bullying. You learn along the way there, you learn a lot along that journey. Um, uh, the later became head of music, then content controller, and uh, a more recent uh, content controller for a national youth brand, what was the Hits, not to be confused with Hit Radio. They got the name from the Hits and they changed it um and so I, I made some notes because i started to think what have i done over the last 30 years um or 35 years in radio uh presented breakfast show on manchester's first minority station which was called uh sunset radio really could do that five days a week monday to friday um i was head of music at galaxy 102 now capital worked at london's heart uh we worked at the utv radio network and i was responsible then for 16 radio stations across the Northwest from Blackpool through to Swansea. Um, and then, then I actually made a note because I couldn't remember. So um, then I worked at Key 103 Manchester along the way as presenter and producer, uh, Heart London, launched D106.3 in Chester, regional program director at Dream 100, Dream 107 in Essex. That one didn't work out so well. I did about a year there. And, you know, the lesson in life is if it's not, uh, it's not working, walk away. And that's what yeah. I did. Um, Peak FM in Chesterfield as a programmer, launched Central Radio in Preston, uh, uh, content controller of the HITS National DAB brand. So now, after all that, uh, I now, um, as a freelance radio and media tutor, um, the thing is you can't take radio out of someone. I, for me, it's just always going to be there. Mm. So I've been working with Sulphur Uni, Stafford Uni, uh, Bauer Academy, I'm working with some in, uh, website stations, including 45 Radio, The Buzz, which is a Manchester station soon to launch on web. Uh, Radio Newark, I even do a show on that, which I need to record later. Uh, I work with Bower Academy, which, which is the training arm of Bower Radio, who own hundreds of radio stations in the UK. And I'll, we'll talk about where they're going and where they're taking radio a little bit later on. Um, and I worked with, um, and they own some like the Kiss brands, all the Kiss brands, Magic, uh, Kerrang!, uh, absolute list goes on. Uh, Greatest Hits Network. So they a big, big radio company. Uh, well, the second best, biggest uh, re radio station company. Uh, and then I've been working um, with Bar Academy, training with them too. So, kind of in a nutshell, that's it. That was a lot. That was a lot. <laughs> but that's good. That's exactly why we've got you here. Thirty-five years of experience, and it shows, and it absolutely shows. But one thing that I found interesting. Oh, sorry. Before I continue, guys, everyone who's locked in. Um, You've got a comment box and you guys can type any questions, any comments, let us know. I can see the screen. So if you see me looking around, it's the screen. And if you see me squinting, it's quite small. So um, send your questions in and we'll um, I'll be sure to ask them to Chris. OK, so one thing that was really interesting of everything that you said is you've got such a variety of job roles. I just want to know when you started did you know what you wanted to get into? Did you know what you yeah, wanted yeah, to do yeah. right, straight away? So I was thinking about this earlier on, um, what what made this happen? Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know when it when it was. I know that I was at school when I was young. And I, 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 was, um, I even went to a, a hospital radio, 
where actually someone's with us. Roy is with us today, right now. Um, he and I worked together. Well, so we did it for free. We gave our time and we started at Hospital Radio. I, I just then all I wanted to do was be in radio. It was it's in my heart. So if you cut me open and saw my little heart, it'll have a little radio there because <laughs> it's communicating. It's it's you know it's delivering. It's engagement. That's what I love to do. Yeah, that's beautiful. Okay, cool. And I think another interesting that you said there, picking up from there. I mean, guys, let us know who's in the building and what's what kind of interests you have. Is hob is radio your hobby? Is radio an interest? Like, where are you on the scale of radio? I think that was really interesting because I think for myself, even sometimes you just start. It's like going after something that you love, isn't it? It's a passion, radio. Yeah, yeah. I think and the industry know that. I think most people that work in the industry put a lot more hours in than they would expect because, you know, I could, I've i been so lucky all my life uh, going from one job to a different job, up, ups and downs, losing a job, getting a job, getting the better job you never expected, uh, not being accepted, all those things. But it, it's, a, it's, 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 a, it's a dream. I'm, I'm doing what I love all day, and that's, that's the most beautiful thing in the world you could ask for. Yeah, yeah, it's true. That's beautiful. So another thing about getting your job, you spoke a little bit there about sometimes not getting the job. Ugh, rejection is like, I'm very well accustomed to when it comes to applying for jobs. But what are some of the skills that you already had that you didn't know you possessed, that you, like, you didn't know that would be helpful? I think everything along the way, um, from, from stay, taking a listener call, from connecting to the listener, uh, from producing, from researching, and uh, I was... I stumbled upon a TV program um, it's called Bride and Prejudice. And it's about couples who want to get married, but their parents don't accept them. Um, and someone said to me, how do they research this? How do they get couples? How do they get the parents who love the idea and the parents that hate the idea? And I said, you know, you just use social media now. Uh, you know, you find ways. And that's one of the things I've learned as a, in radio, to research deeply. And everything I do, everything I talk about, today I've researched. I research absolutely everything I do because it's best to know about what you're talking about. It's so important. So I think research has always become massive for me. Um, one of the things I've always done is kept recordings of all the shows I've done, everything, a little inserts every now and then, because you never know when you're going to need them. You never know when you're going to need that, make that demo for somebody else. Um, and I've learned in the industry to keep my mouth shut. Um, if someone tells you something, just let it disappear into your own head of files. Don't gossip. Don't talk about it because there are no secrets in radio and it will come back on you. So if I was to tell anybody about this business, whatever you're doing, keep everything to yourself. Okay. Okay. Um, so they're the kind of things off the top of my head that I think I've learned. Um, yeah, I, I think the, one the most important is research know what you're going to say know what you're going to do and that comes right across from programming to researching to to production you know know what's next you know have that roadmap in your head know what's the next corner know exactly where you should be going next yeah and did you feel like you had any of those skills before you even started training in radio or no I, radio? I, I trained on the job okay so i was 15 16 uh, and I made mistakes. Wow, I've taken those off air. I've sworn off air. I fell asleep on air. Um, oh, you know, I could give you all those. I only did it once. Okay. I only did it How once. Did you know, fall asleep on air. I'm just curious. Okay, so um, <laughs> it was in the '90s, um, and I was doing a show called The Quiet Storm on Key 103, and it started at 10 at night and finished at two. And I was working hours every hour. To God's end, I didn't care. I was working six days four nights in clubs and bars and what have you. So I'd been working all week, three nights in clubs, got to Saturday, did a road show uh, on the Saturday day, was really tired but didn't get to sleep, went and worked the club that I worked at, that finished, or the bar I worked at, that finished at literally quarter to 10, got to the radio station, did my show, and it was 10, it was 11, and it was 12, and it was, it was about 10 to 2. And I knew that, I'd, I think my head had wound down and I was playing this song from Dire Straits. I can never remember. I've never really. It just goes. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. And so I'm sat there. Da -dum, da -dum. Oh, dear. Oh, so, dear. But, but here's the here's. Um, 
so it finished, but then you have, uh, you had up to 30 seconds of dead air before what they call the emergency tape came in. Uh, and that's the transmitter. If it doesn't receive any music, it kicks in this emergency tape, which is obviously the wrong songs. It overwrites what you're doing. Oh, gosh. 26 seconds in, someone ran in the studio and woke me up, the next presenter. And I thought, again, you know, because people talk, I thought, he's going to go straight to the boss and tell them I fell asleep. So my, I opened the mic and just went, oh, you know, this show is all about making you so relax and, and fall asleep. And that's what it just did to me. Oh, uh, back with you now. So I thought I'd publicly announce I fell asleep before it got into the boss and you could pull me in the office. Yeah, yeah. Improvise. It was good, though. You, know, <laughs> you have to be on your feet. Yeah. No, it was, gosh, it was so hard to fall asleep, though. I think. Oh, really. <laughs> believe me. When I, I mean, I was, I mean, literally then I'd drive home at two, got home maybe half two, quarter three, in bed, up again at seven. But that's what I did with the, you know, I, I was living what I did. Yeah, that's good. Don't that's do that good. now. So down below in the comments already, Sophie Wool says that she wants to be a presenter. Well, tuned into the right um, masterclass because hopefully at the end of this, we'll be able to give you some tips and, um, some knowledge on how to do that and you still got some comments there like fall asleep wow wow i don't know if you can see them but yeah okay oh, yeah. so you can see the comments yeah yeah they're there okay yeah, good. yeah i did it but only the ones you know in 35 years that ain't bad <laughs> um so my next question for you is did you ever encounter i know you just said a little bit a while ago about you know not always getting the right job um did you ever face any negativity? Was the road so easy as coming out of school, getting your job, and that was it? Did you uh, encounter any bumps in the road? If so, is there any that you would feel comfortable to share? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think um, when I was at school, so I knew, I mean, the last year, definitely last year, I mean, I was doing the discos for school. I was, you know, that's all I wanted to talk over music or talk on the radio. That's what, and we had, I don't know what they're called anymore, but they had careers officers and we'd, we'd sit in there individually and you'd be going in, it was your turn. And I said, I want to be on the radio. I want to be a disc jockey. I want to be a presenter. Careers office, man. They, I remember this. They just did this and they looked down and said, why don't you think about getting a proper job? Get a proper job. That's what you need. You don't want to be doing things like that. So, yeah, because all they, they didn't know about commercial radio at the time. I think they only knew about BBC and... Um, and it was a while ago, obviously, and, and and I thought, because you said that, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And, and you're not stopping me. In fact, you know what you've just done? You've made me want to do it more, and that's what I'm going to do. Do you know what? There was never a moment in my life that that anybody could make me change my mind. That's yeah. because I wanted it. That's the hunger, and that's where great presenters survive. And then, you know, as I said, I got a job at the radio station, and I kept my either in the programmer. Um, and you've got to remember this was, you know, this is a while back and, and things weren't the same and they were quite direct with you. And I remember bumping into the program in the corridor, this big tall man called Colin, Colin Walters. And um, he said to me, I, I kept sending demos. And I think I just, you think I, you know, I made him angry in the end. I got stopped sending me them. And he said, you do know that you're never going to make a presenter because you've got a lisp. Now that was damaging because for ages, I thought I had a lisp. I remember going home to mum saying, well, you know, this lift, this lift, I'm thinking I've got one now, uh, this lift that I've got. She said, you haven't got a lisp. And he said, you'll never make it on radio. And it was 25 years later, uh, and I obviously had been broadcasting on air, I was programming, I'd gone beyond what he had managed in his life in, in the industry. I mean, you don't do these things, but I had to. And it was a, a reunion of the radio station. So I've had a few glasses of champagne and wine, and I kept thinking, I'm going to go and tell him. I'm going to go and tell him. And I you know, went over and said, you were wrong. You were so wrong about telling me I wasn't going to be on the radio. And it's unfair that you did that. And I sat and he went, yeah, I know. I was. So it took 25 years to tell him. Um, the thing is, if someone tells you no, that you should see that as a double yes. Yeah. It's a, you know, don't let someone put a wall in front of what you want to do in life. Mm. Yeah, that's a really good tip. So first tip already is don't let anyone tell you no. You know, want something, really, really want something. Um, so yeah, and even Matilda said, shots fired. <laughs> so, Absolutely, yeah, boom. Yeah, boom. So we've got a few questions there. So Lewis says, uh, Chris, a lot of people in here are DJs who are just getting into radio. 
there is more of a difference than people think. What would be your th- top three tips to help with that transition? So I was going to get onto that question. Would you yeah. like to answer this now? Or should uh, we? No, can we? Because uh, I've, got, I've got the answer to that. Yeah. Um, I don't want to jump the gun. So I want you to, I, yeah. I, I, I can give you a really, I'll give you the answer. And it's a really good answer. All right. Okay. I just want you to hang on till we get further to, into yeah. this. Because I don't want to. Hang on. We've got um, progression here, but thank you so much for your question. Keep it coming. Thanks, Stay Lewis. tuned in. And we've got another question. And it says, what are the best ways to structure your radio show? Any tips on finding good research topics, content to talk about for mainstream radio? We'll get onto a lot of these. These are like yeah. progressive questions. So let's just zoom in there since people want to know. I'm going to come back to these questions. Um, so what is presenting? To everyone who's locked in, um, hi, I'm Queen Tan Tan and this is Chris. And this is the presenting masterclass. And I presume you already know this. That's why you're here. Let somebody know. Tell your friend. Tell a friend. Share the link. But what is it when we say presenting? What is presenting? So, uh, uh, I spent the latter part of 10, 15 years being a programmer. Now, a programmer is someone who is responsible. Uh, let's talk about commercial radio. Responsible for everything that goes out on that radio station. And um, I go back to many years when I was on a smaller, we launched D106.3 in Chester, and it's, I, I was in a board meeting with all the people that owned the radio station. And I'd never seen them before. All I saw was radio, 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 broadcasting, broadcasting. I didn't understand what it was about. But you know what it was about? It was about making money. And they sat down, and I was there with my little report. Uh, you know, this is it's all glorious. And one guy, one of the um, shareholders said, right, we all know this is about making money. And it brought reality back to me. And I thought, it is. That's what this is, commercial radio. Mm. Um, but it's changing. And we can talk about how I think radio is, is its almost like we've just planted bulbs and radio is growing again. But these flowers are going to be bigger and better than the flowers I've seen in the last 35 years. Seriously, it's, I'm terribly excited about what's coming for us. I, it, and I wouldn't have said that a year ago. I really wouldn't have said that a year ago, but I'm, I'm just very excited. Um, so I need, it's in commercial radio, or and, it, and that, that actually, it, whatever, you need listeners. You need people to listen to the radio. If no one's listening to radio, you're finished. Um, presenters take advice, and, you know, you watch X Factor. Why have you come on X Factor? Well, my friends said I'm good. Well, of course they will, and so will your mother and your father. And guess what? Your boyfriend, girlfriend, but they're not the ones that you need to be, getting the advice from because they're never going to say well you can't sing do you know that or you're not a great presenter they'll always so it's about the other people the people you don't know the audience that you need to bring in so i look for originality someone who's interesting someone who's memorable um someone who respects the audience and actually quite humble as an individual um someone who likes what the listeners say to them, listens to what they say to them, Uh, because you are a friend. That's what a presenter is. A presenter is a friend. Um, So you need to be communicating, engaging, entertaining, and more than ever, listening, listening to your audience. That's super important. So what I want everyone that's with us today who's working out, wanting to get to radio, is find it in your heart. Do you really want it? Is this... Is this something I had, I had people turn up and I remember this kid, Liam, t- t- turned up at one of the radio stations. He sat down in my office and, and he said, I want to be a presenter like, like my mate. So I was like, OK, uh, the Martin who I brought in and, and turned him into a star. And I said, OK, why? Well, you know, because he's got all these fans following him and, he's gonna, and it was everything that was wrong. Everything that was wrong about being a presenter. You get fans if you're good. You know, it's about earning respect. You don't get fans overnight. So you have to have the skills. You have to want to do this. You have to want to work hard or it's not going to come your way. Yeah. So for everyone who's saying to me, how do I become a presenter? First thing you write down in your little mind or your piece of paper, whenever on your phone, do I want this? Why do I want this? How can I make this happen? That's the start. That's the very beginning. Um, I wanted this. And I was willing to push my way through carefully because you knock too many people down, they might come back in your lifetime and they might end up being your boss. Um, so know that you want it, be hungry for it. Yep. Never let go of it. Never let someone take that, that love of it away from you. Mm-hmm. And then we'll start to talk about how you become a presenter. Okay. 
Okay, I like that. I really like that. Um, I think there's a lot of things to take back. Guys, if you're watching, get a pen, get a paper. I'm so awkward because I don't think I can write it down because everyone can see me writing it down. But I'm really liking these tips. I really like what you said about being a friend. I think that's a really nice thing because I think even when I listen to radio, sometimes you're in your car. You know, when I started listening to radio, you're just by yourself and that is your friend for that moment. So that's really, really important and thinking about those listeners that are beyond your family. Um, that brings me nicely to that question that was asked earlier. Uh, Solomon, <laughs> can you go back to that question, please? Um, the DJ question, I think it was from mm. Lou. So, I like this because I think, first thing I think is, the first similarity I can already see, and Chris, you can definitely touch on this and um, give them way more advice than I can. But a DJ, I feel like, does a lot of them same things. As a DJ, you care about your audience. As a DJ, you are almost like, the friend who's the life of the party. So what is it that a lot of people here are, deep, are DJs who are just getting into radio, there's more of a difference than people think. What would be your top top three tips to help with that transition? Is this a good um, time to segue into that question? Yeah, I think that, listen, learn, get better, keep getting better. Uh, there's another real, I, was, I went for a walk, eight mile walk today because you know, that's what's the thing to do. And I was actually around Media City because I, I thought, well, I'm going to be talking to people today. I want to go somewhere that will make me, give me a buzz. And it always does when I'm there. And I came up with a line that I'm going to share with you later on because I think it's just brilliant. Um, so the world of broadcasting uh, is unpredictable. Um, you never know when you're in favour, when you're not. You could be at the top of your game and you just get it wrong and you come tumbling down. Um, so it's... Three nuggets, in a nutshell. Um, Three listen to your heart, because your heart will tell you you want to do this. Learn, be professional. Um, and they're the three. I, I can't tell everybody individually um, what you should do, because everyone, everyone's different. And now I've only just met you for the very first time. Actually, we spoke on the on the phone. Uh, I'm going to use you as an example, if that's okay. Okay. All right. I'm nervous. So uh, great. Um, uh, <laughs> so I'm going to I'm going to speak. I'm going to tell you exactly what my mind told me ten minutes ago. She's surprisingly good, and and I'm not being rude by saying surprisingly. Okay. I mean, sh I really think she should be further on now. Oh. But but it's about helping you find that. Um, okay. Because what you have, you know, and radio is not just radio anymore. It's vision too. You know, there's a camera in every studio. Uh, if you go back to the days, I found some old photos recently of people smoking in the studio, an old show I used to do called The All Night Beat, and it was 80s. And we were Saturday night again, it was the overnight. It was the first show that's playing dance music, house music, uh, hip hop. Uh, a, a guy and I called, uh, he was called Stu Allen. We did this show and it was phenomenal. It was just people were listening all the time. Um, and I don't know where I went with that actually, but I want to come back to you. Um, you have, oh, that was so, yeah, we had people in the studio and you would, oh, yeah. it would be mental, you know, just like party going on, which made the radio show brilliant. But it's about vision too. And you've got that too. So you've got the great vision too. So it looks, you, you're winning there. Beautiful oh, smile. Um, but but you, you're a communicator. Uh, you're a listener because you've listened to everything I've said so far and answered that. Um, you know, there's there's many presenters that talk about themselves when they're interviewing people. I, I, do you know what? If it's your show, I hear you all the time. This is tell me about the person that sat with you in the studio. Um, it's connection. It's a it's engageability. If there's such a word, you know, it, that's what you have. So that's super super important to start for me the journey to take someone from DJ, presenter, and then I turn them into a personality. Mm -hmm. And once we've gone DJ, uh, DJ, presenter, personality, that's when we get to stardom because okay. you've, you've taken the journey mm. and you're on your way there. Beautiful. Guys, I hope you took some tips. Lewis, I hope that answered your question. If not, uh, write any follow-up questions down below. We're still here. Um, we're going for a little interval break in around 15 minutes. But I think you already started segueing into the next question. Thank you for the compliments, by the way. Thank you. Thank you for saying I look nice. <laughs> that was really nice. Um, so, 
Do you view radio as a dying medium? Now, I know what you're going to say, but I think from, I remember when people were kind of saying that, and like you're saying, it's changed a lot. Can you take us through some of the changes you've seen and where you kind of think yeah. that might be going? So when I started radio, there was 19 stations. Um, and by the way, not many people wanted to be on the radio then. It wasn't, and you know, to be a star, was hard you know these opportunity knocks was the the, the tv show that, that, that people had and it was horrendous um and then you had x factor people want to be stars they want to be stars overnight um but i think that's wrong i think you have to learn your trade you know your bricklayer doesn't build a castle in in three days um so uh let me what was the question see i've lost myself what was okay, the question so, oh. Our question was, it's okay, by the way, is radio dying like... Oh, yeah. Um, th right. So, um, so there's 19 radio stations, and we grew and grew and grew and grew to... There were hundreds of radio stations, uh, and they were everywhere. And actually, brilliant, because it gave, it gave so much opportunity to so many people who wanted to be in radio. And then they became local radio stations, so you could have one in little towns and villages. And in Manchester, there were so many of them. Problem was, they couldn't all afford to keep running uh then the big companies came in global came in bought many of those lots of those turned many into capital heart smooth and just last year um bauer had bought any other available radio station more or less bought lots and lots of groups they sent out they released two or three weeks ago that they're going to make them all into one station majority are going to be greatest hits radio some might just be taking uh you might just have a breakfast show on i think there's seven or eight uh of the the other stations um and so if i'm getting this wrong forgive me um and so they're making it and, and rightly so because that has to happen now that has to happen for commercial radio to make it function you have to have big brands advertisers need to be able to sell to a mass and that's that works um, recently, some people have just had uh, a letter or a phone call saying you've lost your job. There are many presenters just about to lose their jobs in the next four weeks. So you could say it's disastrous. So one of those presenters called me and said, I'm fed up. This is the second, third time this has happened to me. I'm just going to get out of radio. I should sent me a message. And I just sent a little message back saying, uh, can you do me a favor? Can you call me at 11 o'clock tomorrow? Do me a favor. Don't think about getting out of radio all night. Think about bigger things, but call me in the morning and we'll talk about it. So we did. Oh, you know, I've had enough. It's, uh, I said, look, you know, it's inevitable things are going to change and uh, and the smaller stations can't survive. So what's happened has happened and, and it's going to work for many. Um, but have you thought of anything else? He said, well, you know, I'd love my own sort of dance show or I'd love my old house show. I'd love my old... I said, well, think a bit bigger than that. Go a bit bigger than that. What, what, what? Um, what could happen now is you could set up your own radio station. He also runs this 26, genius little kid, nice little kid to me, um, who obviously has earned enough money to, to get two bars. When they're up and running, they're back making money. He's, got, he's been lucky. He's, he's just a clever lad. And I said, could your bars fund around about £3,000 a year? And that's including the set-up fees. Could that happen? Well, I think so. So I've had a thought. You've got two bars. They're called Liquid Spirit, somewhere in Yorkshire. I said, why don't you open an internet station called Liquid Spirit? Oh, I said, I'll help you. Um, and uh, I said, hey, great, great, that's a good idea. I said, what happens? So with internet radio, you're worldwide. And, and I kept saying, well, you can't have local radio. You can't buy local clients. It's not possible. And then it struck me, you know what, you could. You could run the business from your from your bars. You could have a, a clever little internet radio station. You could broadcast uh, show, uh, shows from your club, your bar, your club, um, and you can tell listeners when they go on holiday, they can take Liquid Spirit with you because they can listen to you anywhere in the world. Yeah. At the end of the call, uh, I set him up with a guy who uses uh, my, uh, an old friend who I used to work with, and we you use Playout System, Playout One System uh, over at Pi Radio. I think. Contact my friend, send the details. I think this could work. And so I couldn't do that 20 years ago. I couldn't set me on radio station up. You can now. And I think that's the way forward. And you can be your own boss. Yeah. Uh, you know, think about what you're doing. You know, that you need guidance. You need guidance. But that's how I think you can get, you know, spotted by bigger, bigger radio stations, producers, yes. pro pro programmers. Be good at what you do and open your own radio station. 
that's amazing. Yeah. That's not that was not possible when I was that age. So is radio? You no, know, it's absolutely radio is growing. Community right. radio is yeah. growing, and and the audience is falling a bit on the regional radio stations because these other little radio stations are chipping in slightly at the corners. Yeah. So bright, its future is super bright, mm. super bright. Thank you so much for answering that. I like that because I think. Um, one thing you said is be good at what you do. I feel like right now in this day and age, there's so many influencers and so many people who've got like, you know, a lot of big brands. But I think one thing that everyone who's trying to be a presenter, so Sophie Wu and anyone else who's here, it's remembering to just be good at what you do. And I like what you say, you don't have to wait anymore to kind of like for BBC to notice you or for, for all these other big stations to notice you. you Absolutely. Just pick up, make your own radio station, you've got a phone and etc. Now, that really does segue into our next question. However, we've got loads of questions and I think we should just stop and just I'll run through some of the questions that we have, if that's OK. Sure. Yeah. OK, so yeah. Um, actually, there was one before that. I think Matilda asked right there. How do you how do you write a, and stick to your radio script and timing? Uh. Uh, that depends, really. Um, uh, how do you write and stick to your radio script and timing? Are you asking, have you got a set amount of time and you have to fit it into that? Yes, Matilda actually has a show, so I think... But a lot of that comes from training. And, and um, started in, in July is a step into radio, which is part yes. of the high radio, uh, which we'll be working on, and I'll be there, um, which is something I'll be helping train people. Um, but um, how do you... St uh, well, it's about timing. Um if I'm reading your question right, how do I read a script and fit it into the allotted time? I think that's what I'm reading. How do you write and stick to your radio script and timing? Yeah. Uh, okay, right. Let, let me, I think I know. So for every link you do, you should be prepared. Okay. Um, okay, I think I, th I, think I get this question. Um, every link you do should be prepared. So you should have what you know you, exactly what you're going to be talking about but here's what you should do don't write the link down because it's not natural it's not you do you remember dj presenter personality star you don't become the star by being a dj dj is someone who just talks like a robot it's you know the 1980 djs present who starts to get better at it a personality adds their light to it and suddenly it, they're delivering it real what you do, you write break notes, just lines. Just remember what you're going to do. So you have a middle, uh, sorry, beginning, middle, and end to, to your script. So I'm going to call it link script. So every single link or script you're going to do, uh, it should have, you know what you're going to do at the beginning. You know what you, how you're going to come into it. Um, you know what's going to be the meat of, of your uh, script, stroke link. And then you know how you're going to get out of it and that you wrote those things down. It's like writing a story. Every every time you talk is a story. It's the theatre of the mind. Um, so it's preparing that and keeping to the timing is run through it. Um, you know, I used to watch presenters um, do their links and rehearse them. You know, as you've got three and a half minutes, songs playing. You've got three and a half minutes, and we used to start the song. No one with the vocal start. We'd run through it. And when you get better at that, and it takes practice, throw the script away and become the personality. Love it. The presenter, DJ, reads it, you bullet point it, you add your personality, you throw it away, and that's when the star of the person comes out. Begins. Love I it. I hope that helps. I think that was nice. Practice. That was basically, yeah, that was really, really, really nice. Okay, so there is another question. Matilda, let us know if that was useful. Um, so there is another question. Solomon is not trying to go in order, guys. So <laughs> what is the best... I wish I had this um, mouse. What is okay. the best quality to have to be a radio presenter? And that's by Radiant Films. What is the quality? Oh, sorry, guys. That's all right. Yeah. I would read another question. By uh, what is the quality you have to be a presenter? What's the best quality? Well, I think I've just answered that. Yeah, um, you just did, actually. Do you know, it, uh, I, um, I tried to be lots of people when I first started. And... I'd had all kinds of different acts I can do them now. You know, that's a great song coming up for you now. And, here the, and you know, this the, and that's what we did, you know. Thank you for tuning in. It'd be uh, the news coming up real soon and blah, 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 all that rubbish that I hear. Uh, and, and, you know, what I was asking you to do is listen to presenters on the radio and they all kind of sound the same still. Um, you know what we did at the hits? Um, 
up to about two years ago is a youth brand. So it's 16 to 24 year olds. That's what we're targeting. So you had either side. And I was learning too, by the way. I was still learning. I mean, and I'm learning today. I'm learning tomorrow. Um, I I kept thinking, what can we do to make this radio station stand out? And I was listening to stations and it was always, so that's uh, Justin Bieber and uh, Sorry, or that was the Beatles and Yesterday. I think, well, we know that. We know those songs. Don't tell me. I'm not stupid, you know. Well, um, and so um, I stopped them back annoying the last song. And I'd ask anyone who's who's watching this now if they've had a go. Try not to do that when you start a link on radio. It's the hardest thing because that's what's set into our minds. And it took me a while to get the presenters to do that. But they would go straight in to the meat of the link that gets straight into. And the only way they were allowed to talk about the previous song is if they had some, some you know, social media information about it or you know, Justin Bieber's just bought a brand new car, you know, it drove it down the road, only gone and scratched it, cost him another, you know, 30,000 pounds. That's how you get out of that song. If you haven't got anything interesting to say about a song that we all know, get straight, you're wasting the listener's time. Um, so, uh, you know, these are all the things that we're going to be doing on the Step Into Radio. And yes, I'm kind absolutely. of super excited about starting that on, on the, sort of, I think, 13th of July. So come aboard. Let us know what that is, guys. So just to let you know, we have got um, a project. It's three months, right? Mm -hmm. Somehow, guys, I'm just going to confess, this is the first time I'm hearing about this, which just oh. somebody in... Okay. It's like I, what, what I know. Um, is I'm going to be doing it um, with some others, but I'm going to be in the radio side of this, um, and it's it's kind of based over three months on on um, not every day, maybe a couple of days a week, um, and we're going to cover just about everything that you need to be a presenter, from presenting to interviewing to marketing yourself to social media, um, everything that you want to kickstart you. Um, and I had a dream for this when I was getting into radio. I think I've got that right. <laughs> Love that. So um, there's one more question that I can see. It's Sophie Wall. Down. <laughs> yeah. Guys, so it's so hard to be discreet with my little help. <laughs> um, so Sophie Wall says, what is something you wish you knew? Oh, that's a really good question. Yeah. What is something uh, you, you wish you knew when you first became a radio presenter? Uh, and I often, I often think this. Um, do you know what? I wish everything I'm going to train is all part of this because I had to go through it to get to know it, to not do it. Um, you know, I, I talked about the DJ presenter personality. I wish I could have been a personality quicker. I wish I'd stop being other people as a presenter and I could find my personality on air, which I could have found it quicker. Um, because I was, I went through the the journey of being a radio presenter and and sounding like everybody else. The great thing about today, the great thing about YouTube, the great thing about TikTok, the great thing about uh, Instagram is everyone's famous for thirty seconds or so. And and when I go through that and I watch it every night, I'm looking all the time to see what the youth, the young people, the new talent, the fresh talent that's coming through. What are they doing? And you know, I'm watching everyone do that. This. You know that dance they're all doing on TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, you know. And then every now and then I see someone, and I see someone who's got the the bottle, the energy, the individuality, to do something different. And I can I can see it. I can I can you know I can see what they're about to do. And I'm thinking, you're different than the rest. You're better because you've got something more than what they have. So um, I wish I was me. I wish I was just the person that I am. Um, I, I, by the way, it takes a long time. You know, probably by eighteen, you should know you as an individual. So what are your what are the positives about you? What are the things that you do? Have you got dry humour? Are you funny? Are you sarcastic? Do you make mistakes? Are you clumsy? I'm talking about me here. Um, do you get things wrong? Yeah, I'm brilliant at that. I would do competitions and be giving the answers out. And not even know it. I'd be saying, you know, all you have to do to win this album, tell me what this album's called. The new album from Queen, which is, um, I don't know, I'm a drummer man. And everyone in the studio would be looking at me and, and 
I'm thinking, what's wrong? And, and they're all going, you've just given the answer. And, you know, that was me. And then the listeners started to like that. So I started to realize that I had to stop being the person that I think I should be. Mm. And the only way I was going to win was to be me. Beautiful. That is very good, guys. That is amazing stuff. That's <laughs> So I <laughs> said, guys, that we were supposed to take a break around quarter past. Seven. However, Chris, I keep getting questions. All I can see is questions. So if it's okay with you, Chris, let me know. Yeah, let's roll on. I'm happy. I'm happy. You're happy? So let's Yeah, let's I've had my dinner. Right I'm in the good. swing of things. The questions just keep coming. So let's just take some time before we still continue. So there's two questions I feel like you can maybe answer together. So one is from DJ Harvey and it says, what do you think is the best way to keep an audience engaged during the show? And that also links to this question by in TV, which is what is the longest amount of time you should speak on radio before going for a music break? Two, one... two really good questions. How to keep yeah. someone engaged and how long should the link be? They do interweb. Um, yeah. So excellent questions. Um, this is something I, I, I you know, coach all presenters. Um, how long can you last um before you get bored uh, you know this is this is quite a long we're having quite a long uh, conversation now and you know when you said shall we take a break i'm thinking no cuz you know will they come back that's you know realistic will people come back you should never give anyone an exit door um paul chandler who uh is an amazing um coach at, at legal he's going to be part of this course too i always remember years ago he told me this he said chris you know when we're doing radio, we should never give people, we were out having a drink and he said, we should never give people exit doors. And you've got to think, if you're talking with a few people and then they go to the toilet, the conversation's broken up from three to two. And when they come back, it's a new conversation. So the conversation's broken. So never open the door for listeners to go. For me, how long should a link be? As long as it needs to be. Don't say things you don't need to say. You know, um, the days of listening around the radio with the whole family we're in 1920 if i'm driving in the car it's probably going to take me 10 20 minutes to where i'm going to go and in that 20 minutes i want you to give me the best entertainment i've given you my time i've turned your radio station on i've turned your podcast on i've turned your internet station i've turned your dab station on. i i'm giving you my time right that's and you want my time you want thousands of people like me so you know what you do you entertain me you play the best songs possible. The, 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 you know, we talked about the future of radio and where it's going. The difference is I won't hear the same 120 songs over and over and over and over again. That's where we can get better. And that works for commercial. It absolutely works. You know, stand by. If I was going to you know, get you to work for a, uh, you know, a, 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 a capital or a heart or a, a, a hit station, that's what I'd get you to do because that's right. But the future is bright because we'll have internet stations that can play all types of music but keep me connected, keep me engaged. Um, don't waffle on, a bit like I'm doing. Don't waffle on, um, it, you know, beginning, middle, end. Know what you're gonna say. And, and it's, it's these things are nothing new. They've been going for 20 years, these little catchphrases. Um, if you know your beginning, you know how you're gonna get into something. It's so easy. And I've ha it's happened to me so many times in this last hour and a half or whatever. I've distracted, I've gone off, I forgot the question. All these things happen because that's what we do and it's live. But know the beginning, middle and end. Mm -hmm. Know what you're going to have that down. If you know, you start off with a bit of writing, a bit of for each one, then you go to the bot break notes and then you just go to throwing it away because it's in your head. Um, so I would have my presenters, it all depends. If you're going to listen to a music show, a minute, a minute is quite a long. What you should do is record yourself talking for one minute and see, listen back to it. Another great le a lesson I learned when I was, there was a show I fell asleep on, but it wasn't, it was another, it was another, it, it was, you know, I was being coached. And it, I mean, I use this, I use this little trick a lot. We listen back to the link and then the programmer said to me, so what did you hear? What did, what was in that link? I went, um, well, I talked about the weather. I talked about the song. Um, I think something else. Uh, and he said, so you delivered that link and you've listened back to that link. And within seconds of that link, you can't tell me what's in it. Mm -hmm. What hope has the listener got? Yes. Wow. 
Do I know. If you don't have a pen and paper during this free masterclass that has got some, do you know what I'm loving? You've got some really practical tips. Like I'm saying, the, the sad thing about this is I can't write down. I'm going to be listening back to this. Um, but you've got some really practical tips. Like, I'm literally imagining what you're saying. I'm imagining, what can, what do I get from my one minute of speaking? You know, some really good practical tips, recording yourself, picture yourself in a conversation. And the good thing is they're all situations that we've all been in. So they're really easy to relate to. So guys, I really hope that you are loving this just as much as I am. Um, let us know on our YouTube, our Twitter. We've got some handles for you. There's one ha hashtag masterclasses and the other one is hashtag creative diversity. So before I go into on my next question, there's one more other question that I think we can touch on that has come through the comments box. And that is by Bradley West. It's a long question. It says, I present a show uh, that's mostly a mix show. I interview and keep mixes broken up with features, but I don't want to keep, but want to keep the focus on the music over myself. What are your tips to, oh, what are your tips to keep audiences engaged? Okay, so I feel like we've answered that question. I should um, so Bradley, uh, I present a show, mostly mix show. I interview uh, and keep mixes broken up. Okay, so you have mixes and you talk and sometimes you have guests. Bradley, can you do me a favour, and, and I'm going to give you 60 seconds while I talk, and let's see how much I can get in 60 seconds. Could you just get back to us on that que like your question and tell me where, what platform you're broadcasting this on, okay? Um, so, internet station, uh, is it, you know, I just want to know what kind of station it is, and that will help me. Um, uh, so, right, okay, how can your audience engage? Well, your mixes should be part of that. So if your mixes are okay, then you might keep people. If you went back and made those mixes incredible and you did different things, you know, um, I, you know I, I use SoundCloud, MixCloud. Uh, I can never get my head around when someone's put a mix on MixCloud and, and it, it ain't working. The beats are out. <laughs> You're not, why are you putting that onto MixCloud if you haven't got it perfect? Um, I think... Um, in between mix shows, I need to know what platform it is. And I'll tell you why. Because oh, here we go. Sorry, Chris. That's all right. Oh, oh Pi Radio. radio. Oh, what a great radio station, too. Okay. <laughs> How do you make Pi Radio even better? Um, all right. So, so people are going to tune into that. So well, let me explain why. Because they know that's what they're going to expect. Um, they know that this is a station that will play longer mixes. Um, the guests. See, I, I, interviewing as a whole, I, I could. I could spend a day teaching people, uh, coaching people on, on interviewing. Um, and it, it, there's just so many different things. If you're going to interview, could I just say, when you interview someone, listen, listen to what they say. Um, I get frustrated when I hear people interviewing and they go in and, you know, they've got all these lists of questions and they're sat there and they don't question the answers of the person they're interviewing. Because that's where you go deep. And this is what I try and teach everybody. When you're interviewing somebody uh, and, the, the, you know, you are asked a question, maybe if you ask another question that's really interesting that's just come up, it's more important than the next question you're going to ask. It probably is. And, and when I interview, uh, you know, uh, stars or whatever, I, I would listen closely to their answer. And it takes a lot because sometimes it's quite you can get quite nervous, you can get a bit, you know, uncomfortable interviewing people that are, you know, familiar, famous, whatever. But listen to their questions, listen to the, the sorry, listen to their answers, and li and question their answers. It's so important because you'll take that's when it becomes interesting, because you might never have asked that question if you hadn't heard their answer. So when you're interviewing someone, if you're interviewing some an artist, you know, where did you thought this? Where did you hear the music from? What made you do this? What problems did you have? What did you incur? Why did that happen? Why? Brilliant. Brilliant, best, best word that a child would talk. Why, mummy? Why, mummy? Why, mummy? Because we did that when we were kids. Why stop now? Yeah. Why is that? Tell me more about that. To be Push honest, them. Unknownly answered this question here. What a good generic question to ask guests when your mind goes blank. <laughs> okay, um, so mine has. Um, and I'm going to ask you. Um, what made you get into radio? That's directed. Okay. What made you want to do it? That's you. What made me want to get into radio? 
it to radio. Well, firstly, I like talking, and this is the perfect thing for people who like talking. How did um, you find out that you like talking? I always spoke, and people told me that I liked talking. Okay. So people used to say, God, do you talk a lot? <laughs> yeah, my dad used to be like, to go, shh. <laughs> what, does, what do you get from your dad? What was, um, what, what's your best memory from your dad? What's the best bit of advice your dad's ever given you? Do as the Romans do when in Rome. I don't know and do you? Best, but do I, I try to. I try to. My dad is kind of someone who kind of just goes with the flow, kind of tries to understand his surroundings, not just come in and like a bull in the china shop. And do you think you take after him? Well, my mum is a bull in the china shop, so I, <laughs> I, I switch when I want to, yeah. uh, strategically. So I feel like I have learned the skills from my dad. Do I always use them? No. Do I know how to use them? Yes. Okay. So I'm now going to ask a question. Now, this is where my brain will go, oh, okay, I'm going to try it. And this person might or might not answer this. Who gives the best advice, your mum or your dad? Who's given you the best advice, your mum or your dad? What, what have you taken from either your mum or your dad, which has been the most valuable? Okay, so who gives me the most advice and what have I taken from... Yeah, the best, the best, who is, your mum or your dad, who's given you the most valuable piece of advice in life? Oh, that's really hard. I think I want to give it to my mum. She doesn't Why? give me advice in the way I like to hear the advice. Ah. My dad is probably the one I prefer to talk to because he's more sound. But I feel like my mum has definitely given me tough love in the sense that... Um, like when I was younger, I just didn't like my forehead underneath this. I used to think, oh my gosh, I just used to be like, oh, I, I want to change this about my face, I want to change. And she just literally just gave me, well, she just looked at me and put in the knife and said, okay, well, well, look, change it in the mirror. Obviously knowing that I couldn't change it. So I looked at the mirror, I looked at her and thought, I, ca I can't. And she said, all right, we can't change it, so stop talking about it. And then just get used to it. And I think since then, I feel like, that's exactly what I've done. I think about the situation. If I can't change it, if I don't like something about myself, I just get on with it. So I took us on a journey then. I only ask questions from your answers. And, yeah. you know, what we've learned from you right now is incredible. And it took us a minute. <laughs> you know? Um, and, you know, I will ask questions. And I'll, I'm not here. I'll, have, I'll go through more. Then I'll get to a question thinking, this is going to go this way or this way, this is going to go, they're not going to answer it, they're going to answer it, but it might, might bring a tear. And by the way, emotions are good. Um, I'm not saying you should make people cry all the time, but, uh, you know, it, it really helps people. And another thing, again, is is you don't have to, silence is amazing. For that three seconds just then, a lot of people have listened in just a bit closer because what, what, what? silence is incredible. So sometimes don't always talk, just Think about the question. Take a couple of seconds out. Mm. Life doesn't have to go that fast. So uh, why? Push push your interviewee further and further and further until, you know. I mean, amazing what we, you allowed us to take from you just then. Honestly, I feel very exposed, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> but that's my job. You know, uh, you know I, 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 I was, uh, I knew I'd forget his name. Um, he, oh God, uh, Ollie Murs. I did a Christmas special, recorded a Christmas special with him for one of the stations I was working on. And um, it was literally just him, but I was producing him and I was getting him to talk. I was getting to say, what about this? And and, and, and I thought, it was all about families. And it was, um, you know, will all your family be around the table for Christmas? And he looked and he looked at the record promoter manager there and I think the manager just kind of went, no, but he carried on. And he said, all but one. I said, who's that one? You know, if you're going to, let's go down this journey. Um, well, it's my brother, my twin brother, I think he said. Um, we've never talked. We've never spoken. And I'd love to, you know, have him there. What would it mean for you to have him there? And in my head, I'm thinking, oh, this is, this is amazing radio. This is, we've got. You know, you then would send that to all the press and everybody. You would have the best story. And I drove home. It was miles of Stoke. And I drove from Stoke back to Manchester where I live. And I kept thinking, we've got a story. We've got a story. You know, it went on further. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. And I got a call in the morning. You should never ask him that question. That's not allowed. He's not allowed to talk. I'm surprised that you did that. I said, my job is to interview and to ask questions. 
if he chooses to answer, that's fine. If he chooses not to answer, that's also fine. But I wasn't allowed to run it. And then I think it was only just recently, four or five years later, he did the whole breaking down with tears on um, The Voice and delivered that four years after I had that story. And that was only because I asked why, who pushed that a little bit further. Um, so what's a good generic question to ask when your mind goes blank? I think, you know, you, you, that's when you have your list of questions there. Have your standby questions, preparation. You know, if you don't prepare things, you're going to prepare to fail. You know, let, let always have those things. Um, and have those things just to look down at. And have them in big writing so you don't, you don't scramble around for them. Just so you know, I've already done that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Again, really practical. I mean, you did use me for your example, which I'm not angry about, but very exposed there. Um, I hope my parents are listening because my dad will be like, oh, right, okay, so I'm not the one that you take advice from. Very He'll love it. He'll know how good you are at this. He'll be <laughs> so, I didn't know you were that good. <laughs> okay, so... Um, Radio has kind of changed and presenting, you can present so many things, it's not just the radio. So advice for people who want to get into presenting but don't have a community station or don't have good equipment, etc. By the way, we've just had um, some lovely comments here. You've had some, that was ace, thank you. And uh, Sophie says, so I'm really... A uh, few minutes behind, but thanks for answering that. I'm making some serious notes here. Thank you so much. Uh, Sophie, you've got the look, by the way. Again, you've got that great um, personality, but I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to get, you know, have fun with broadcasting. Have fun with being on the radio. Um, don't take yourself too seriously. If you take yourself seriously, the, the listener, the viewer, they're just going to, you know, walk away. They, you know, I think more people have just got to know you better because you've let them into your life. And that's what I would teach my presenters to do. Um, and again, I've forgotten the question. Is it what, 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 what was the question? So, the question was advice for people who want to get into presenting but don't have a community. Space. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and that's around the world. Look, look for a community station. Um, uh, I present on a community radio station, and then you know, I stopped presenting and I haven't presented for, for, for 10 years because I was programming and I was coaching and I was, you know, in charge of the output. And that's another mistake I made um, by not keeping my hand in presenting, still doing a show. Um, you know, I could have covered shows when people were sick. I could have done someone on, on holiday to remind myself what I'm teaching and the obstacles and the challenges that presenters that I kept enforcing. I mean, you know, I was, I would have sessions every day with presenters and I'd pull them in breakfast every single morning after the show, mid mornings every day, drive every day, you know, before their show. Um, and that we would listen back to the show. And, and my question would always be, that was good, but how could we make it better? And we'd sit and I didn't always have the answers. I had an idea, but never the answer. And if you question those things, normally the presenter comes back and say, oh yeah, I could have done it better. My answer is do it again tomorrow, but at a different time. So you did that at five o'clock yesterday. Do it at three o'clock tomorrow, but do it this way. Um, and I remember one of those, and I will answer the question about how do you not go into the radio. Um, because this has just come. Uh, I was It was the Hits Radio, and the breakfast show were on, and there was a guy I called Donal, and Darren was the presenter. And they did this this thing about Donal was going to have eye surgery. And, you know, the, the laser thing. And um, they talked about it. It was, well, oh, going to have laser. Oh, I don't fancy it. Oh, well, I've had it done. Oh, oh, oh. And it was an okay link. And I pondered about it till the end of the show, and I got them back in. I said, that was a good link. And then Darren said, well, I've got a video of me having my la eyes lasered. Have you ever seen it happen on a, a YouTube it? Okay. I mean, I'll never do it again. I would never, I'd never do it. I wanted to, but I'd never do it now seeing the video. And I said, what we're going to do, and by the way, nothing has to be live. If you want a good link, if you want a creative link, sometimes record it or record it if you're going to be super creative. So I said, what I want to do right now, I want to start recording. We can edit this down. It might just be 90 seconds but we'll record everything. And what I want you, Darren, is to talk us through the process while we watch your video on YouTube. And I want Donald to tell me what he's thinking. And it's horrendous, it's frightening. You know, they laser, they pull your eye back, and you know, you've got this fear thing. That, 
and it turned from oh yeah, I mean, to oh my god, what, what, how did you feel when you did that? And the link became color. Originally, it was just black and white, but the color came out because we added the little bit of the image, so someone could see the image and talk about it, and speak about what they saw. So they turned a dull ish link into a really super colorful link and we got loads of reaction from that loads of reaction so i um, back to the station so i work on uh, uh, radio newark it's in newark if i'm very honest i don't i've never been to newark it's somewhere near nottingham i think um but that doesn't matter i've done my research i know when i'm talking on the radio i'm talking link, and i do it via the internet i do it with this microphone with these headphones and this computer that's all it takes me and I log in using uh, Playout One, which is a system you use, dead simple. So find a station that might be able to log in and do the links. Um, and there are loads of websites, uh, even on Facebook, and just type in internet radio. And there are loads of internet radio stations looking for presenters to fill their shows for free, because it's your trading ground. You know, present a uh, DJ presenter, personality star, start the journey. Um, so just use Google. It's an incredible invention. I mean, I, I never had it in my ears as a presenter. We had, we had like newspaper things. The world is there. Every link should be created for the information that you get. Correct information, by the way. True information, never false. Um, so do your research well. So go on, find internet stations where you can log in and do a show. It's the technology now. You don't need to be in a studio. We've learned that from lockdown. Majority of radio we've been listening to has all been done from someone's lounge, someone's bedroom. Someone, even a friend of mine was doing that from the toilet because it was the best acoustics. You know, So it's possible. So find these stations, look for them. They're not going to come to you. You know, life ain't that way. You know, you don't go out to that tree at the back of the garden and get 20 pounds every day because it doesn't happen. Go looking for it. Go find it. And it's there. Honestly, there are just go Google it by internet station looking for free presenters. And I bet you'll get some. Thank you for that. Um, and I feel like, yeah, exactly. Another practical example here to think about. Uh, lockdown has definitely taught us that it's not the building that we're after. So, yeah. Very nice little tip there. Again, you've got some more questions. Sophie is really on it with these questions. So, Sophie says, as a question for after the interview interval, I always get nervous before doing a live show as I'm worried about saying something wrong. How do you overcome mistakes made on live radio? Okay, you don't. Um, was I nervous before I came and doing this? Yeah, because I thought I might say the wrong thing. Um, <laughs> DJ, presenter, personality star. Go through the rhythms. Make your mistakes on there. Say the wrong band. You know, I, I was, you know, doing that overnight dance show, and I, the band's called Instant Funk. So you guess what I got wrong there? Um, and so I swore on air. Um, the best way to do is I do hope that's never offended anybody. If it did, I'm sorry. If you say it straight after you made a mistake, straight after. Don't wait. Don't think people aren't going to hear it. Own your mistake and apologize straight away. Um, the um, Ofcom respects you more if you do that. Um, then you get yourself less in trouble. So apologize. Really need me to say that word. I'm so sorry. I hope it didn't offend anybody. And move on. And don't come back to it. Because uh, my thoughts is if, if you've played a song and then you've sworn, but actually the people who've just tuned in didn't hear the swear word, you've actually made more people aware of it that actually knew about it. There and then, just do it. Nerves are good. Nerves are great. Nerves are important. Nervous energy. I mean, I have it. Um, I think ner I think nerves and tension all makes things better. But if you just can't cope, if you're just not able to, take a breath. Control silence. Silence is brilliant. It just just stop. Then you know you've asked me questions. I talked about something else. What did I do? I'm sorry, what was the question? I've asked you again. Fine. Think about talking to your friends. Think about no one in a, when we're out and we're having dinner or whatever you're doing with socializing with people, it's not perfect. And that's what it's all about being you, being personal. Make mistakes. People like you to make mistakes. People loved it when I kept giving the answers to questions to win prizes. They loved the reality, the natural, the stupidity, the foolish, the, the, the you know that made me the presenter I was. And so, nerves are good. Use them the right way. Take a deep breath. 
we often start to talk quickly when we're in a place where we're not happy. And you start to talk a bit higher. And in the end, you're like this. So actually just stop and be honest. Be super honest with the listener. I think that's what makes me... You know, Chris Miles is Chris Miles. And I never used to enjoy listening to him. I had to listen to him because of where I was working. I had to go over the Peak District. And it was the only radio station apart from Radio 2 at the time I could listen to. So I had no choice because that, that was it. And DAB wasn't on my radio, blah, blah, blah. But I learned from him when I listened to him. I was like turning him and going, oh, God, I've got to listen to him. There's now Elf, so, you know, I've to, I should have bought another CD or whatever. You know, all these things. And by the way, iPods and all that and streaming wasn't available. But I got to like Chris Moyles because he was honest. He was real. He was funny. He made mistakes. And he was honest about it. He was genuine about it. So perfection doesn't make star, personality, presenter, DJ. Honest, real, genuine people make great radio. And they make mistakes. They say the wrong things. They forget what they're talking about. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. Perfection for me is not what I tune in for. Mm. Well, I'm glad you said that because, quite frankly, I've actually <laughs> tripped over nearly every word that I've read out from these questions. So, Sophie, nerves is something I'm very accustomed to as well. So I'm glad to hear from someone who's got such experience that it's not a bad thing. Um, okay. So uh, yeah, building rapport is essential. I'm on it. I'm on it. Here, you see. Uh, sorry, I'm taking your job from you now. Um, <laughs> yeah. Do you want me to do it, or are you going to do? Oh, it? I think okay. you should do, do it. No, I want you to do it. You're the you're the you're the host. You're well, important. I'm, I've just been tripping over every single word of these, so bear with me, guys. So, Radiant Film says, building a rapport is essential with your interviewees. How can you build a relationship easier with someone who you don't have a lot of prep time with? Okay, so do you remember we talked about preparation? Um, I'm going to give you two examples. Um, three. When you have someone come into the studio, have a great chat. Don't make them wait outside in the green room or wherever. Have a chit chat. Have to find out about them. Have Find out how you pronounce their names properly. Find out a little bit what you've been up to today. And again, why? Why did you go for a walk, Chris? Uh, well, I wanted to think about things today. I was going to look at a new city. But then you start to get to know me. And you, so it, it's more of a friend. And that opens, that connects you. Preparation. Look on social media. Find out what they've been up to. Twitter. What what makes them angry, you know? Uh, my Twitter is, I use, I use it a lot for promotion. But, um, you know, then you might, if you dig deeper, you'll see I'm playing into Moon Pig, um, complain to uh, uh, Northern Rail, but who didn't complain to Northern Rail? Um, you know, you'll find things about me there, and 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 there, the, you know, I, I noticed that you know on your social media, Chris, you um, you didn't have a good time with uh, Northern Rail. What happened there? You've you know, you've entered a, a door in my life that it's miles away down the corridor, but you've just gone straight in there. And I would, you know, oh yeah, well every morning when I was going to Liverpool, the train was late. Every single, day. you know, suddenly, you know, you you really. You, you got stuff about this person and do your best not to uh, i'll tell you what listen to other people's interviews that's one of the best ways if you've got someone uh, that you know of what go again social media find out listen to what they've been saying and ask questions of the answers they've given to someone else so i hear you uh, used to like climbing trees when you're a kid and you fell over and broke your leg would you climb a tree to you know would you go back to doing that now was it something you know it's it's about preparation and if you have four or five pre-packed questions that are jammed that are real gems like that you're not going to go wrong hope that answers that question i think that was good thank you so guys as we start to wrap up there's one big question that we've not answered yet that we've not asked yet so chris let's say so right now what, what have we found out let me try from memory this is everything i've got so far so um let's say right now somebody has taken the radio they've been passionate they've wanted it they've been driven they've tuned into master classes like this they've learned you know they've kind of like become that dj become that um presenter they become the personality they're on their way to becoming a star They've literally taken in nearly every advice. They're becoming themselves. They've listened to themselves. They've thrown away the script at this point. How do we, most importantly, make money? How does radio become, you know, something I do at my local community radio to something I do on a commercial stage? How is it something that I can take that step further? 
answer to that question, you take the journey we've talked about. Um, you work hard, you build yourself as a brand, and you become valuable. Don't think you're going to go on the radio station and you can't quite understand after a year why you're not famous. It takes you know, a long time for anyone to get good. Create the brand. Again, these are the things that we'll be talking about in the in the, uh, the course that we're going to be running uh, with Pi Step Into Radio. These are the things that we're going to, as, as a group, talk about. Be who you are. Become valuable. And by that, become popular. All the things we've talked about today could make you popular, but it's it's a journey. It's a journey. You'll never, a bricklayer, as I said, doesn't build a castle in three days. A bricklayer starts to build a little wall. Then he builds a bigger wall. Then he starts to build a house. Then he builds a block of flats. Then he builds a castle. And once he's built a castle, people go, he's a great bricklayer. You should get him. He's built that castle. So as a presenter, you, you know, you will, you'll make mistakes. You'll fall asleep. You'll swear. You'll, not you'll turn up on the wrong day for a show. Um, all these things that you have to do to grow, to be that presenter, personality star that will make you money. You'll make money when you're good. So the journey is work hard, build a brand, become valuable. And that, you know, that's when the cash tills start to ring. Mm. I loved it. Thank you so much, Chris. And you know, you've got some more thank yous, not just my own. You've got, um, here we go. This has been extremely useful so far. Thank you, Chris. And Pi Radio, we beat you to it. Uh, they just asked us the question that we had asked. Uh, Sophie, I'm sat here talking to my laptop like I'm in a conversation with you. Thank you for the advice, Chris. That's great. Um, so there's some more questions coming in, though. So it's not the end, guys. If you still have any questions, it's not the end. Um, still send us in the questions. Remember our hashtags. We've got hashtag masterclasses. We've got hashtag creative diversity. And you can get us in the comments box, YouTube, Twitter, and on Instagram at Pi Radio UK. So this is a question that we have right here, Chris. As a recruiter for radio shows, what qualities should I look for in people when aiming to invest time in training them for radio? Uh, um, listen to them. Let them talk. Um, find out what they feel about the station. You know, um, I think people would come to me and I'd say, what do you know about the station? And it was a, a double-edged sword for me. And they go, well, because all this was on the website. And they would just tell me what was on the website. And I thought, okay, what show did you enjoy listening to? And you can see they haven't really listened to it. So I would want a presenter who gets the brand first, who understands your your platform, your radio station. Um, that's super important. Um, but what I look for always is someone who just interests me, someone who... Uh, I can, you know, I, I want to take fresh talent. I don't want talent. I'm, I'm happy to look after anybody. But the, the most enjoyment I get is is from people who I'm going to learn from too. And, you know, in my past, I've taken on presenters who are super raw, made loads of mistakes, did things wrong, were incredibly frustrating to manage. Um, and, you know, people say, why have you got that person working for you? Why have you got, they're always doing this wrong, which that would make me go, but that's what's going to make them. That's what's going to make this station. That's what could become talkability. They become some people that will grow and listen to you. Um, and so, you know, if, if, you know, again, sorry, I'm going to use you as an example. You just said that I fluff things. I've made things, you know, you haven't, you just, when you said, this is what we've talked about and you told you didn't write things down, you didn't look down at any notes, you delivered everything that we've talked about. So you've listened You've taken it in. You mem your memory was brilliant, by the way. I wish I still had memory like that. And you simply just delivered it back to me. Um, and while you were doing that, and I don't know if my face was showing this, I thought, well, she's good. She's all right, you know. And, and so, uh, for example, if you sat down with me, what I would be thinking and what I'm thinking is I could take her places. She's not there yet. She's probably in the DJ stroke presenter bit, so she's kind of a good way on. But I want to make her a star, so I've got to take her through the personality bit. That's the great ride. That's the fun ride, because you know you will buy into me. You, well, that's another thing. I want someone to buy into me. I want you to buy into me because I'll take you on that journey. I want you to deliver things in my mind because I can't do it as well as you. 
All I want to do is make you see things differently. Um, so my observation is what a presenter should be. They listen. They know what's going on. They've got personality. They're individual. Um, you know, I've made mistakes. I've hired people that did great demo tapes, sat in front of me and sold themselves. And I put them on air and I'm thinking three weeks in, that was a mistake. Oh, God. What am I going to do? Uh can I change this person? Can I work this person? And what happens is when they're not willing to grow and they just don't think they're going to grow, I start to reduce their time on air as links. So maybe from seven links to five links an hour to four links an hour. And then they'll start to know because I'm saying, I only want you to do 30 second links. <laughs> and when they're at that point, it's like they'll get fed up before I will. Um, so it's about person. Look for someone you look for in a friend and they will make great radio. Hope that helps. I thought that was great. I thought that was useful. Again, me so exposed. Um, and it's been very nerve wracking to have, I guess someone who coaches radio, trains radio, 35 years of experience, and I'm speaking to them. It just feels so like, as if I'm under a magnifying glass. But thank you so much for the compliment. And yeah, I've really, really enjoyed this chat, guys. We're wrapping up now. So send us any more questions. I'm going to keep talking to Chris so that you have the opportunity to um, write us any questions that have popped into your head. But we just hope that it has been really, really useful for you. Um, Chris, do you have a favourite show or a show that you listen to on Fly Radio? Um, oh, I can't ask me that question. Um, <laughs> you know, one, all of them are fabulous. Um <laughs> I've been opting it in and out, and I, I, at this stage, I can't answer that question because I think it's unfair, just because I've not given everybody a chance. So, you know, uh, if I said, w I did hear a, a show, uh, sorry, I don't know who they were, it was in the afternoon, uh, and they were talking about the recent situation that, that, that everyone was been talking about. And I think they did a great job of that. Um, what they missed, for me, was they didn't give me the personality. They didn't give me the exposure of what we've been talking about. They told me what I already knew, what I was looking for when I was listening to this link was, how does that make you feel here? How does that make you feel when you go to sleep? How does that make you feel when you wake up? And that would have taken me, but there were two females. That's all I'm going to tell you. They brilliantly, you know, they engaged me. They, you know, I, I think I actually stopped. Don't tell me it was you. You yeah, want, you yeah. want, all right, okay. It's just that little look. Then I thought, oh, it's me again. Um, it just it was the interaction between the two female presenters was brilliant. Um, the timings of the link were great. Um, the, the way they delivered it was great. So um, that's all I'm going to give away on that. Okay. So I'm going to ask you a question. Um, by the way, guys, I'm just um, giving you some time to ask any questions. We've had one in already, actually. Um, but before I go to that question, I'm going to ask you a question based on what you just said. Um, you said the timing of the links was great. What is a good time to have links? That's all, you know, how long is a piece of string? What kind of radio station? If it was on Pi Radio, um, I would focus a link to 60 seconds maximum. And in that, it could be 30 seconds or it could be 90. So if you focus it on 60, and again, you know, go away and do yourself a favor. You, you know, we've all got these now. We can record anything wherever we go. You know, when I was out today and I just started, I, I realized I've got, I haven't been using it. I took the phone. I can just talk into my phone and it writes it down for me. So it's so easy. Maybe do that, actually. Maybe, um, I, don't, I just put it into notes on my Apple phone. Maybe talk for, that'd be a great idea. Just come to me. Um, talk for 60 seconds and, and have it write it down too. And literally, just keep talking and keep talking till the end of 60 seconds. Then sit back and listen and look back at what you said. And then edit out from the notes what you don't think should have been there, what you could have taken out. It doesn't mean it's not going to be perfect. It's going to be a bit jolty. But take out things, your mm, your airs, uh, things that you don't think are all that interesting, things you think that would make people stop listening. Play it back and see how long it is. And I bet you'll end up like 30, 40 seconds for 60. Okay, again, another practical tip. I remember you mentioned that earlier. It's just because when I get the time to sit back and listen to this, I'm going to be like this. <laughs> and I'm going to, next time you hear me, you're going to be like, oh, that's my note. Mm -hmm. That's my tips. <laughs> so 
we're going to be in there. So we um, do have a few questions that have come in. There's two, actually, so we'll start with this one. In TV said, should opportunities be spread fairly across the team to share morale or reward it to those who work the hardest to inspire ambition? Um, if you ever read any of my testimonials, um, they come from everybody in every show. My job is to make every presenter the best. Um, your breakfast, again, you know, uh, typical terrestrial radio breakfast show is important. Um, your drive time is important. Um, but for me, every show is important. So the, the show that will make the most money should be the show you invest in most. Um, the show that you think might bring more listeners in is equally as important. Um, so everyone should feel important. Um, and if you're training or coaching people, and they got it wrong, be clever about helping make them get it right. And that's, we listen back to a link, we hear something, and the way I would do it, you know, that was, I love that, that was brilliant, that. If we were to do that link again, how differently would we do it? What would we do? Would we start by thinking about, you know, let's talk about the, the eye operation one, the, the eye laser. That's what I did. I thought the link was good, but it was missing something. Um, um, and, and help them, to go away and do that link again and they can do that link again they can do it in a different time spot you know rather than three till four they can do it six till seven whatever they could do it at a different time and think about can can we go away and can we add sound effects so we want to record this or do we want to add another voice to it or shall i phone somebody all those different things so um if you want a great sounding station it should sound great all the time so you should have great presenters 24 7. others that's made me curious that question that's made me think oh <laughs> I'm, I'm intrigued by who in tv is now i'm going to research them i yeah, want to find out who that is. i'm intrigued i want to know who they are and yeah. what are they thinking i'm on you i'm coming looking for Sounds you some sort of dynamics going on some, yeah i'm go. actually in tv if you want to get in contact with me for help i'm, I'm here um <laughs> but you're asking some great questions so clearly you know where you want to go whoever you are i love you to my fans. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you mentioned earlier the mixing of music needs to be spot on for a show to be more enjoyable, yet a lot of presenters can't DJ. So why is the order DJ then presenter? Okay, so um, so I think you have to understand what I'm saying. DJ to me is, hello, how are you? I'm the DJ. A DJ almost is uh, a wedding DJ. Okay, a wedding DJ. Um, I I have to leave wedding early because of wedding DJs. They have this tendency to talk. Um, they they drop the music, so you can't hear. And it's really important that they talk like this. Hello, everybody, welcome. The music comes back on. And, the music, uh, uh, and, and you, what's we're fighting with the music, we're fighting with the speech. And actually, what they're saying is not even important. And they talk over the vocals of a song. That's the biggest insult you'd ever do to me for, for, for a present. So that's DJ. So they start there. That's where a DJ starts. That's what I'm trying to say. A presenter starts to realize that you don't have to do that. What you can start to do is talk normally. And actually, you know what? Talk a little bit slower and not shout and be a warm voice to hear. A personality adds a little bit of them in it. You know, the things they get wrong, their infectious laugh. Uh, you know, the, all that kind of stuff. And then what I say is, you're a star once you've gone down that journey. So uh, so you mentioned earlier that mixing music needs to be spot on. Absolutely. Why put anything out that's not good enough? Never be second best. Always be the best. Don't let someone think, I could do that better. Um, and it's actually about the music they play. And sometimes you don't have to be, If you, you know, there's, there's some songs and some, some mixes now that you can be just clever by being pretty basic with it. You know, some songs are tough to mix, but being clever with it. And I've heard some really good mixing on Pi, by the way. Um, you know, where I, even I, I, I can hear a song and I hear the first note underneath. And I'm going, you know what that is? And they go, what kind? Of... That's really good. There's some good mixing I heard um, yesterday, day before. Uh, so far, let me read that again. Uh, so this is, you know, this goes back to someone asked a question. Oh, God, you know, what happens when you, you lose your trail of thought? But I said, you know what? It doesn't matter. I'm just going to read that question again So uh, I'm, I'm, and, and remind you. Uh, you mentioned earlier on the mixing of music needs to be spot on uh, for a show. Absolutely, we know that. Uh, and to be more enjoyable yet. 
Uh, a lot of presenters can't. De- I see what you're. I think I know what you're saying. So, mixers aren't born DJs, right? I think that's what you're saying. Yeah, they are, and I'm not listening to that show for the DJ. I'm listening for the mixes. So, if if they're not, I'd like them just to talk for 30, 40 seconds. Tell me about it. Move on. Um, you know, that mix was put together by so-and-so. It includes these songs. This is what it does. Uh, and let's go into another mix. Here's so-and-so. It's that simple. Just tell me, the, give me information. Don't try, you know, uh, uh, and, and be too cool for school. Um, so it answers that question, I think, is the mix is most important. The link in between the information that the, the, the DJ is giving us, that's fine how they deliver it. But don't let them talk too long because they tend to ramble a little bit. Hope that helps. Thank you. Then we've got one more question, and I think this is probably our last question because we're starting to get some whoops. So I am going to assume that means everyone is happy with the information that's been delivered. So here we go. uh, Order for when this is because... Yeah, because I feel being able to DJ is more valuable because you are then multitasking alongside being able to present a show. I think we kind of maybe just yeah, answered that. Um, yeah, I feel like the, it's from the same person anyway, so I feel like it was probably just a, yeah. a follow-up. Yeah, so I, I think, I please, I'm sorry um, if I've got it wrong. You can uh, tweet yeah, me, know, find I'm my thinking. tweet, or find, yeah, well, well, you know, I'm happy to do that personally. I think what you're saying is, you know, a mixer is a mixer, that's what their that's what their uh, talents are, and they're brilliant at that. Don't expect them to DJ. I'm not. I'm not. I'm. You know, I, if you can help them a little bit, just to be more natural when they talk, and if that means recording the link. Uh, okay, actually, perfect example of this. Hits Radio. Um, we had lots of mixes, and the and the, D, the the mixers weren't DJs. They weren't presenters. They weren't stars. That's not what. Well, they were stars, but they weren't radio personality stars. Um, and I used to hear the, the the links, the information in between the two mixes. And it was so I'd I'd make them record it. I'd just say, look, can you just record it? Have a listen back. If you think that sounds great, let's go with it. If you think yourself that doesn't work, I'll help you. And and so it's the information. And you know, your listeners are listening to the mixer. That's that's you know, they're not DJs, they're mixers, so we can't confuse the two. Thank you so much. Now, you were about to get into it just there, but I'm going to ask you to say it again. So where can we find you? Me? Uh, Chris Buckley UK on Twitter um, is probably the best place to get hold of me. Um, you know, I'm really happy to, to help you along and guide you if I can. Um, you know, what everything I say is personal. It comes from me. It's not, you know, don't sue me. I can do the best I can to help you. It's my opinions. Take them. Or leave them it's it's you know it's all i'm going to give you is the years of experience i've had of get it right get it wrong helping developing making people into stars that's that's what i hope to give you okay. but join the course join the course yes about the course we're about to get into that so there's step into radio by the way guys if you if that went really fast and you don't know where to find chris if you go on pi radio uk um both on well to be honest on any if you go back on youtube you can always access this if you go on youtube um no so if you go on instagram we'll have a picture and it'll have um his tag and then you'll be able to link to his page and find out more about him same on twitter and the rest of our social media um so thank you for that and then the course step into radio if you've, if you've enjoyed this which i can see from the comments that people have then there's even something better coming so last before we go do you want to introduce that course once again so uh it starts mid-july around 13th of july uh 4 30 15th anyway mid-july um go to pi radio find us um online and it's uh, over three months it's it's going to be broken into different day courses i'm going to send you away to go and create something i'm going to send you away to come back with amazing links what you've heard today we're going to do a lot more of we're going to further in depth um we hope that you know I, I love this one person quoted me in a testimony and they just said every time i have a session with chris i can't wait to go back on the radio i'm so anxious to get back on the radio that's what I want to help you do. I want to make sure that you, because you know, I want to be part of the future. Uh, you know, I want, I want my the future radio. I'd like to have helped people get there. 
Um, and I can only do that with the experience and the knowledge that I have. So come on board. Thank you. That's beautiful once again. So here's some of your thank yous so that you can see them. Extreme, extremely helpful for DJs on presenting well. I uh, wanted to ask, should there be a different style of mixing on radio and how DJs mix with the crowd? So uh, Quickly on that, my personal opinion is... Uh, so my feed on Mixcloud just seems to be house, house, house. You know, I want to hear something else. I want you to be clever. Um, again, you know, what platform are you on? Are you on Mixcloud? Are people looking for house? Are they looking for hip hop? Are they looking for soul? Are they looking for, you know, slow jams? Are they looking for, I don't know, old school? Um, know your platform, deliver what works for that platform. I uh, wanted to ask, should there be different mixes? I think um, my thoughts on that is, if you're in a club, it's a different atmosphere than it is on radio. I mean, we were inundated with live people doing mixes uh, during lockdown, and some were brilliant, some were obvious. Um, you know, know your audience. You know, if your audience, uh, what are they going to be doing when they're going to listen to it? Are they going to be driving a car? Do they want to have music that works from driving a car? Are they going to be at home? You know, know your audience. Um, I think you can be super creative outside of a club because if you lose a dance floor because people you put the wrong song on boy i've done that plenty of times you know it doesn't matter when you're doing it on the radio so you can be more creative you can throw in things that you wouldn't throw in in a club um and that's another reason why i'd come to you to listen to it so creativity um is 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 the absolute most important thing for doing it outside of a club okay thank you i'm sorry i didn't actually realize that was a question but thank you so much <laughs> sorry. For dance flow productions some more thank yous. Uh, Matilda, thank you. This has been very helpful. Thank you, Chris. Well done, Queen Dan Dan. Thank you. Uh, well done, Chris. Great advice and totally inspiring for presenters just starting out. That's from Roy. And Chris, thanks a lot. <clears throat> a lot of the time on these kind of masterclasses, they lack practical advice. You've been brilliant on that side and really engaging when you use your stories to bring to life. Thank you. That's my thing as well. I was going to say that, like, the amount of practical tips that you've given us um, has been amazing. And I just thought another many thanks. So thank you so much, Chris, for joining me. Thank you for talking to me. Um, thank you for keeping me alert, because I never knew when you were going to ask for my yep. questions. I know. You, like yeah, you did a brilliant job. You did thank a brilliant you so job. much. So guys, thank you to our sponsors, that's Arts Cancel, and uh, the video will be on YouTube to watch back, um, and advice on Pi Radio as usual. Um, so thank you so much, um, Chris, you've been great. Um, again, literally can't thank you enough. And I've been Queen Tan Tan. I look forward to actually meeting you in person when I come to Pi Radio. Thank you, all right, just let me know when you're coming. All right. All right, thank you. Um, Pleasure. It's gonna be awkward because I said bye, but Solomon's gonna have to exit. <laughs> Unplug us, we're done. Thank you. This is that uncomfortable. We just smile and wait for the cameras to go off.